Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah guys what is going on I hope you guys are doing amazing and I hope that this Ramadan has been amazing as well we have an interview today how I learn Arabic okay with one of the students of Arabic like an Arab so if you would like to know how is it to study Arabic in the program that me and my team run uh, on andrewsinstitute.com then sit down Take your popcorns if you broke your fast already. If not, then don't eat anything. Just watch the interview. So uh, just to give you guys a little bit of context, uh, Brother Hanan is a brother from New York. Uh, he's 17 years old and uh, joined the program, having already studied uh, three books of uh, Medina of the Medina books. So I'll let you guys hear from him. How was that experience before, during, and after? joining the program Arabic like an Arab. Let's proceed. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Welcome back to another episode of How I Learn Arabic. It's been a long time. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, you know, Ramadan and virus, Corona and all this stuff. But alhamdulillah, we're back. And uh, today I'm bringing you guys my beloved brother, Hanan Aslam, student of Arabic like an Arab currently completing the last module of the program and uh yeah guys we're gonna go you know a little bit over how was his experience before uh during the program because he studied arabic before joining the program and how he was after joining the program and during joining the program etc etc so yeah, inshallah just give us a little bit of context who are you where are you from um and what what, what is your background with the arabic language uh, so my name is Hanan Islam. I'm from uh, New York, Queens. Uh, my background in the Arabic language was pretty much zero bef before I started, because I'm a, I'm Pakistani originally, so I had I didn't know it. So like about four years ago, I started wanting to like learn more about the Dean. So I started picking up the letters. My parents started teaching me them. And moving forward, I learned Tajweed with some friends. We started that, and then. I started, I had this passion about like learning Arabic by like to learn Arabic. Actually, to keep it real, it wasn't a passion to begin with. My dad had put me in a course for Arabic at a program and I was like, I didn't want to do it originally. But when I started going there, like the, the, the love sort of ignited. I remember my first day at the first class I had, we were learning uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I went then that B, like the B, means like with. So I was just like walking home. On the way home to the bus, I was just amazed. But like, when you're saying Bismillah, like before you do anything, that's why you're saying it. Because you're saying, with the name of Allah, like you start this. Mm -hmm. Like that just blew my mind. That's how like, that's the level I was at at the time. Mm -hmm. And then Alhamdulillah, I, I uh, got some advice from some teachers. So I started studying the Medina books online with this, uh, I think it was a Pakistani brother on YouTube. So I, I went through all the books and I completed all of them. Mm -hmm. But when I finished the books, I had virtually no no vocabulary. So I'm like, all right, now I just need to pick up vocabulary. So I started uh, doing this thing called, it's called Memorize. It's a program where you can just take Arabic flashcards and memorize vocabulary. So I started to do that to try and get it. And it was working. In all honesty, it was working. And then I came across Mufti's interview with your program. And previously I had looked into it. But now I was just looking into it more. I looked into the webinar. I'm like, you know what, I, I do need a teacher because it was going like I was making progress. But I knew that if I had a teacher, if I had a set program, if I had a, a guide that I would achieve so much more and so much like and in such less time or, in, or so much faster. So I, I, I was like, you know what, this is something I got to do. So walking into the program, I had the three Maduna, the Medina books on my hands with a vague understanding because I would say that was really weak in them since I had studied them myself and then some vocabulary from that and some understanding of how the Tosarif works how like Af'ala, you know, any, uh, fa'ala, stuff like that and how the verbs are conjugated so that that's what I was going in with the program Okay, Jamil so, um, so I was going to ask you basically what was the, you know, the main thing that made you uh, want to start learning Arabic but as you said it was your parents so what I wanted to ask you now is is your parents like like you know practicing or like 
you know, like, you know, as we said, I told love like. <laughs> I'm not gonna slander my parents on on on, on the video, but no, they're they're practicing. Alhamdulillah, no. both my parents are practicing. Like they have that passion of of dean and learning, etc. Actually, actually, how it originated is uh, my dad when he was younger, he had I mean, he had a lot more free time. He would he wanted to learn Arabic himself, so he's doing the same courses that uh, he put me in, and he had gotten a bit of progress, and he's like, you know what, I'm gonna put my son in that because like he saw that I took interest in learning Islam, learning about the religion. So he's like, you know, I'm gonna put him in this program so he learns Arabic. Like he stressed the importance of learning Arabic to me, even though he didn't know it himself, because he mm -hmm. understood how important it was to know what the Quran is saying, to understand what you're memorizing, to understand what you're reciting. So, like, if if I stop Talib al like something happens to me catastrophically, and I can no longer do seeking knowledge, at least at this point I can say I've learned Arabic. There's no like there will never be an a point in my life when I'm reading the Quran and I don't understand anything about it. Like I don't understand what it's saying. No. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Jamil. So uh, okay, so you came across Anders Institute through uh, through the interview with well actually you came across before the interview with Mufti. But then mm -hmm. with the interview with Mufti, um, you decided to join. So I remember I think we spoke on a on the phone. I was asking you what do you study and whatnot. So then you join. I actually I wish I could find like the the actual first weekly conversational session so I can just pop it here. But um, طيب, so you said you worked in Anders Institute with three million books. So why do you think you didn't have enough vocabulary after finishing the three million books? Because some, you know a lot of people might think, well, I'm I'm studying the Medina books right now. Uh, what is the point of you know me finishing if I don't have? In our vocabulary after I finish. So, what would you say was different when you studied uh, the Medina books and what we have done with the three books of Al-Arabi Benedic in the program? So, I think it's different is that when you're studying the Medina books, those are grammar books by far. Those are meant to teach you about grammar. Mm -hmm. But it's common sense that when you go into a language and you start from scratch, you start from nothing. You don't go in just tackling grammar in a different language. So, like, I was studying the Medina books, and you're getting all this grammar, but you're not getting any vocab. So everything seems vague to you. So when you learn about the concepts of Mubtada, Khabr, Nasb, Raf, Jazm, all these concepts are so vague to you, and they're just they're just words. Like, so for example, uh, Kataba, he wrote. You don't understand like the deeper meaning behind like kataba, katib, maktub, maktaba, all these times, times, types of things, be from the asl. When you and that's what's different about it when I joined this program, because this program Arabic, Arabic like an Arab, it sets you down with all the vocab you need, and it makes things so that when you're learning it, it's more natural. It's more like at first it's it's rough, no doubt. Like when you're when you're starting off. And you're learning, picking up the vocab. It gets annoying. It's tedious. It's like, oh, it's so much work. Mm -hmm. But as you practice it, as you use it in the weekly conversation sessions, and as you, you know, keep on going, things become more natural. They become more easier to do. No, it was uh, actually interesting as well. Is that uh, as you said, I was actually talking to uh, with someone like two days ago or so. How, uh, how like. You know, grammar. You can't really, you can't really do anything with grammar if you don't know the language first. And actually, it was a question as well on Instagram. Someone asked me, uh, and make sure, please, Hanan, you in the middle of uh, of the frame. If you can actually push the the phone a little bit farther from you, it would be it would be good as well. Uh, it's as far as I can go. Okay, that's fine. I got on like books. Okay, so so you see. Uh, Someone asked me, when should I realize that, okay, I should now just focus on, on grammar or like start studying grammar, like officially, like, okay, I'm just start Al-Ajrumiya now and whatnot. And the thing is that the, you know, I just said, whenever you are able to understand a whole class, a whole lesson in Arabic only, because you have enough yeah. basic vocabulary to understand the concepts, then that's when you should know. You know, but the thing is that 
if you don't have no vocabulary to understand, I don't see the benefit in, in like I don't even see how I can explain you a rough or when nasb wal jar in English to to make it relevant in your to make it like actually mufid as knowledge for you to use. Yeah. So um so okay. Um now what do you have to say about the because the way how I set up the program is uh you know and this is how Ustad the Tawab as well used to teach me in, in Egypt is we used to focus only in the vocab for a good amount of month. However, at the end of every lesson, he will give us like a, just a little relevant lesson. Like for example, you know, Al-Mal uh, Hijaziyya or, or Laysa, how do you use Laysa? Or, or some of the Nawasikh Lil Mutad Al Khabar. So what would you say that, uh, that he, you know, how was that beneficial? Just the whole structure, mainly on module number two, since that, that's the main module uh, of the program. Hmm. So, uh, looking back on it, I think the structure of the program, how it works, was so wise. Uh, even though when I, like, from a personal experience, I'm saying, keeping it real, that when I went to the program and I looked at these bonus lessons, when, I was, when you were putting out these grammar and stuff, mm -hmm. I had already known a lot of it because of the Medina books, like I said. But looking back on it, it's such a smart structure because as you're gaining vocabulary, you're being introduced to small, small concepts that you, you will later tackle in, in depth. So, for example, you, you know that uh, you, you learn maf'ul mutlaq in like lesson 42 or something. You learn mubtada uh, al-khabr. You learn jumlat al Stuff like that. Just you understand the basics of it so that when you get to module 3, when you get to ajramiyah, it's not like a foreign, oh, what is this? I've never seen this before. So new, you're taking too much in. It's like, you know what? I've seen that, and now we're just building upon it and strengthening it and like properly laying it down. Mm -hmm. no. So that's what I've done. No, alhamdulillah, that was the actual intent of it. Taib, so now let's talk about what, you know, people who are actually interested about learning the Arabic language through us, perhaps. And uh, what they really want to know is, what was you able to do before, and what are you able to do now? Oh, so I had I, I started the program in September, so I wasn't able to listen to scholars' lectures and understand them. Definitely not that that like at all. When it comes to the Quran, I would understand little bits, snippets, but it's it's still like I'm translating it in my head as I'm going. I'm saying in my head, and the angel said, oh, in like English. that. Yeah, in English. I'm working mm -hmm. it through. It's slow. And uh, what else would I say before the program? I was not able to speak at all. Like, if you look, like, I'll send you the link to the, my first weekly conversation session after this. Mm -hmm. But if you look at it, I was like, Oh, and I messed up, like, Amr and Umar, something like that. Mm -hmm. It was funny. Uh, but after the program, Alhamdulillah, I can say that I can fully listen to lectures of scholars. If it not be the first time, if I just repeat it a second time and understand 100% of what they're saying, if not 95%. Mm -hmm. If I have to look up a word or two, I'll look it up. But I can understand the point of what they're saying. Which is mm -hmm. the most important thing when it comes to this to learning a language. You understand the point of what people are saying, and you understand what they're trying to get across. That's the most important thing. Mm -hmm. As for reading the Quran, Alhamdulillah, it's it's like a whole different world. Like when I'm going back and I'm reviewing the Quran right now, I'm reviewing a, just the Baqarah with the Surah al Muks, 29th juz, and I'm looking at it, and I, like I notice the difference in my head, because when I memorized it before. It was like, you know, you're just memorizing the rhythm, the tune, like stuff like that. But then when I'm looking at it now, it's like, you know what? I don't even, I, I rely on the uh, the, the tune at, at, to some degree because the 29th juice has a lot of difficult vocabulary that you never see anywhere else. Mm -hmm. But no doubt, like when you're talking about the story in Surah Al-Qalam of the people of the, the garden, it's like, oh, you don't miss, you, you understand the order of the story the order of the ayats and the way that Allah put them and it, it just comes to you so much more naturally and so much like it hits you so much more deeply in your heart like it's fun like you really see like what is Allah is trying to say here like it's just like 
after the whole star story it's like it's a poem that like hits you deep so and so that's that's listening to scholars lectures reading the quran and being able to seek alhamdulillah but by, by the tawfiq of allah i can i can confidently say that i'm fluent in speaking like i can speak to anyone on nearly any topic and I, maybe I will struggle, but I will definitely get it across if it's a difficult topic. But if you want, you want to talk to me like, oh, how was your day been? I'll be able to like, speak to you fluently, easily. Mm-hmm. And and once my mind gets into the Arabic mode, it's in there. It's like it does not stop in it. Yeah, sometimes it takes it takes a little bit of time to to get into it. But once you're in, so I was gonna say as well. Plus, it, it helps to mem- to memorize and and just remember and keep the memorization. When you actually understand, as you said, like the whole, okay, I spoke now about, you know, Ashab al Yamin, and now about Ashab al Shimal, and now I, I talk about. So, yeah, definitely. Um, another thing as well that I was going to say is you see how you've seen, how you said, for example, uh, you know, mainly when reading the Quran, like even me nowadays, there is like, and this is something I was thinking actually to just do it for for once just go over the whole Quran just as, as we did on module number two so I can just get all the kalimat but uh but there is always kalimat even in a hadith etc that you need to go to look to look into the dictionary so the way how I structured the program is that every single module has an objective to it so module number one and plus if you tell me that you have achieved that uh you know those objectives then then alhamdulillah that's my that was my job you know so the introduction for me, it was to set the mindset of the student, to let him know how to discipline himself and provide him the, the, um, you know, the resources. Now, module number one is to the necessary knowledge on, on the, the necessary knowledge to read and write, al-ilm al-kafir al-qira al-kitaba, where the student needs to be able by the end of the, of the module to transcribe uh, whatever he hears in Arabic, meaning, you know, if I say Muhammad Zahaba ila kaga, he's able to listen and, and write it down. That's the second, the second module number one. Then module number two, the objectives of it is that if you're reading or hearing something or talking to someone, uh, mainly reading, and you get stuck on a word because you don't understand it, whether it comes in a form of Mali, whether it comes in a form of Mudare, whether it comes in, in with whether it comes in any shape or form, you know how to figure, even if it comes is an ism, it comes muthanna, anything, you are able to go back to the dictionary and look it up, you know, and understand, okay, so this is this, and this is why it came as I was reading it. For example, as I asked you today, where is oh, it comes from tamanna, so it's mahdhuv, noon. So, so, you know, you get, you get, um, you basically become a, an independent student. So uh, and then obviously module number three, you know, um, the objectives of it is, uh, is to gain all the basic knowledge of, of grammar to the point where, you know, where you know more grammar than the average native Arab, to be honest. And you are able to do Arab of, uh, of different sentences and whatnot. So now let me ask you, did I, did I, you know, did we achieve all of those objectives for every single module? I mean, for the first module, definitely. Second module, definitely. Third module, I, I can't say yet. Like, we haven't finished all the books yet. We haven't finished studying with sure. the Ustad of mm-hmm. So, I'm, you know, I'm still prepared for it. But definitely, like, there is a noticeable difference. Like, I can see, like, okay, no, you don't say yaktuba, you say yaktubu. Just like when I'm reading the Quran, it's not ba'dohum, it's ba'dohum because this and this. Yeah. yeah. yeah alhamdulillah. So, um, Okay, Jamil. So, uh, so now I was gonna ask you. You know, there's a lot of people who thinks um, or have this main, this, and it happens to me as well. Sometimes I just think that, for example, I can, even though I have everything that I need in in my house, for some reason my brain tells me I need to be in this other place to be able to to do this type of thing, which I'm able, like if I really talk to myself or no, or no, like if I keep it a hundred with myself, it's like, I can't do it in my house, come on, like, I'm just giving myself excuses. So a lot of people happens this to them, where they say, oh, I need to, I would never learn Arabic, I need to, 
travel to Saudi, I need to be in Egypt, whatever it might be. So there was another student in the program as well, who was a module number three, who was saying how before the program, uh, she thought she would never, you know, she would never learn to the level she really wants to learn online. So now let me ask you, do you feel, you know, with the goals that you have and, you know, being able and having the assistance of, of my own teacher, Saab the Tawab, who taught me, uh, you know, eight years ago and still study with him. And, you know, looking at the fact that, you know, we did that Jeremiah right now. Now we're going to do Al-Mutamima. Then we're going to do Qatr Nada. Then we're going to do al ibn Malik. Then you can go in even to read big books like al Hiwar or whatever you, you want from the scholars of, uh, of, um, of the Arabic language. So do you see like the, the possibility of achieving your goals in, in learning the Arabic language to, um, to uh, I would say to a, even a scholarly level online? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, um, that's deep. Uh, I would say yes. Because when I look at it, it's like I'm studying with a teacher who's your teacher in Egypt. He's like a very well, like, he's very well exercised or whatever you would say. He's a professional in the field. Mm -hmm. So I'm getting this from the comfort of my own home in America. And I'm a firm believer of it's not about the move, it's about the movement. It, like Mufti says, sure. that it, it doesn't matter where you are, but it matters what you're doing. Mm -hmm. If you're in America, if you're in Canada, if you're in the UK, and you're studying from home, and you get what you need, then you'll just be more prepared when you go overseas. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, overseas is, 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 is a great thing for a student of knowledge. But ultimately, it's not the end goal that, oh, I get to Medina University, it's done. No, Medina University is just a, it's a tool for you. To, mm -hmm. to get you to a higher level, to get you more access to people. So for, for this program, I would definitely say it has given me what I wanted and given me like one of my goals, which was to be, it's, it's open that key that you need. Because now, look, there's a lot of dirses, like lessons online. Like Usul al-Fiqh, Ajumiyah, all this kind of stuff. There's a lot of those lessons from sheikhs online on youtube so now that you have this key you can go study them if when you get to that level even if you're in america even if you're in america like you have that key you have what you need so i definitely say the program has given given me it and allowed me to achieve my goals in america now no, alhamdulillah another thing that i wanted to say as well is uh you see a lot of people when and you know i can testify to that since i was in in egypt a lot of people think that going to Egypt is going to be easier because it's an, Arab, it's an Arab country. But the thing is that you're not going to be practicing no fusha in the street, that's for sure. You're only going to be practicing in the actual merkaz during your, your classes. So this is why, you know, I set up the, the weekly conversation or session and whatnot. And, uh, and how would you say that the other resources of the program not you know because a lot of people see okay he's just a program like you know he's just gonna teach me Arabic but I actually thought about like the other aspects of you know like building a community the Facebook we have the questions the performance tracking calls the weekly conversational sessions for, so from all of these resources uh, which ones do you think that made a difference that you didn't have before joining the program uh, with the the teacher you was uh, studying and um, and yeah, which ones you you like the most, basically? I think the three biggest things that influenced me in my path of like learning Arabic was one the week one on one review sessions, two the weekly conversation sessions, and three the Facebook group itself. So the one on one sessions were like one of the biggest steps for me because like when we started, I started doing review with you of the words, and you started telling me like, no, no, stop doing it in English, start doing it in Arabic. And that was the big game changer for me. When I started talking to myself in Arabic, going through the words in Arabic, explaining the new words in Arabic, making sure that everything clicked in my head, I was able to do it. That allows you to use words you've already memorized and pick up new words at the same time. And it's just a mix of both worlds. So that was, that, I love the one-on-one -on -one calls. The one, one review if, is like one of the best things of this program, in my opinion. Secondly, the wicked conversation sessions. It, it, the 
they provide a platform for you to just practice. Like, forget about being shy. Forget about, you know, being afraid of talking or making mistakes. Just go for it. Like, it helps you so much. And because of the teachers that have been in the weekly conversation sessions, I believe that I've benefited so much from them and from what, they, what else they provide. Because another thing about the weekly conversation sessions is besides the fact that it's just, it's you're speaking Arabic, you're listening to Arabic, you're getting used to it. It's also a connection to other students of knowledge. Like, for example, the two teachers we've had in this program, Ustad Abdul Haq and Ustad Ibrahim, both of them have influenced me so much as in they opened like my eyes to this new world of like, oh, this is how seeking knowledge really is. This is how, you know, Talib al is. And they give, they give you those connections that, you know, you never had before. And that, that was one another great, like, massive benefit that I took from the week conversation sentence. And finally, the Facebook group. It gives you a platform to not only connect with other people, have a safe space to like, you know, make mistakes, but also like put out stuff. Like when when we were back in the day, a couple months back, when the Facebook group was more active, we used to put out like videos of us just speaking. Like every student would do that, and said uh, Muhammad would, uh, would correct us, and you know I would be like I want to do it every day. Like you know, you're afraid of it at first, but hearing you being corrected, and then picking those stuff up, and then you know, keep on, keep on doing it, it helps, without a doubt. And then the mm-hmm. students there as well, the students in this program are absolutely amazing. Like, it's my firm belief that I have a fir- like a firm friendship with them now because of that bond we've made over learning the Arabic language. So, alhamdulillah, that, that was another great benefit from the program. No, alhamdulillah. So, uh, so, just to conclude, inshallah, uh, what would be... What would be... I mean, you've been seeing different students in the, in the program. Uh, with you as you said what do you think that made the because I can say that diff- definitely the level that you have reached and, and your seriousness is way different than other students as well so what would you say that was the difference in between you or you think that you did well that you might have seen other students doing um, doing wrong mm-hmm. so I'm not going to throw my brothers on the bus I believe in my firm, it's my firm belief that every person has the unique way of learning the Arabic language. But amongst the principles that people need to follow is sticking with one book at a time and sticking with one program at a time. Yes, there are some people who, if they learn grammar first, they might benefit more. Mm -hmm. And if they learn vocab afterwards, they might benefit more. There are some people who do that. But if they keep on doing multiple books at a time, so I'm doing Medina books, I'm doing uh, Arabia Bani Adik, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, all at the same time, you're not going to have enough time to focus on one program, focus on one book, and thoroughly understand it. So that's the biggest thing that I've taken from my experience as, like, from previously doing the program, to do one book at a time, to study one book at a time, to study one program at a time. And that's, and I think one of the biggest things that has allowed me to progress as much as I have is the fact that I have a lot more free time than a lot of the other brothers in the program. Mm-hmm. And... Because at the end of the day, it comes to how much time you're able and you're willing to put into the work, like to working. So mm-hmm. if you're putting in six hours a day, if you're putting in five hours a day, it might take you longer than the next person who had more time than you, but you'll get there eventually. So to summar- summarize it all, stick with one program. If you're going to do this program, if you're going to do that program, stick with it. Keep on doing it and focus on the books that they teach. Focus on one thing at a time. And build yourself a castle. Don't try to build yourself three separate apartment buildings. Build yourself one castle and allow it to shine mm-hmm. amongst everything. Plus, I think as well that's a that's a good message to uh, to brothers or sisters that don't have responsibilities yet, that might be under their twenties or they are still under the you know the guardianship of their their parents. I think they should, you know, just use it. You know, this is a clear message. As you said, uh, you know, once there's many uh, students, most of, of the students I would say in the program are either married, you know, sisters who have already kids that need to be taken care of. So, uh, so yeah, that's definitely a, a good point. So uh, I will ask you right now, last thing, you know, what will be the, the thing that you would tell the person uh, that is willing to learn Arabic and he sees the importance and knows the importance however 
you didn't start learning the Arabic language yet. Just do it. Just start. Just it. <laughs> no, don't hold yourself back. Just start going and know that no matter where you stop in your path, you'll still be better than where you started. Because if you learn the Arabic language and that's all you do, that's, that'll be enough for you. Because then the rest of your life, you will be able to read the Quran and understand it. I can't like fathom dying and not having understood a word of the Quran like without having to look at a translation, just naturally. Like, I can't fathom that concept. That's why I stress even to my friends in, in New York, like the importance of learning the Arabic language. You can't be like refuting no people talking about all this stuff and you don't even know Arabic. Like you're talking about Asul al Fiqh, these principles, this Sheikh, this Sheikh. You don't even know Arabic, man. Like learn Arabic, start. And and know that that Arabic and the Quran are literally the fundamentals. Like without Arabic and the Quran, you're building upon like nothing. No. Yeah. Abbas. طيب إن شاء الله فإذا حتى نعرض للناس مستواك الآن بالعربية فقد يعني أجعلك تختم هذه المقابلة فتسلم على الناس وتنهي المكالمة هذه إن شاء الله لعلكم تفيدون من هذه هذه هذا هرار ويعني أرجو أن تستفيد من هذا وخاف الرياء لا أفعل هذا لكي يعني أنا على يوتيوب وأنا مشهور كل الناس يعرفوني لا أعرف هذا يعني أفعل هذا لكي تعرفون لكي تعرفوا ما هو عناية العربي وهذا البرنامج الذي يعني العربي كالأعراب مفيد جدا وأرجوكم أن تأخذه وخذ الفائدة قبل الموت. نعم إن شاء الله. هذا كلام. فيا لها من ف يا لها من نصيحة. فإن شاء الله. Thanks for tuning in, man. Again, let us know if you watched all the way here in this in this interview for any viewers. Let me know in the comment section. Say in the comment section. Just write down Andalus Institute. So I know that you have watched all the way until here. So I know who's the realest uh, viewers <laughs> of the How I Learn Arabic um, interviews. And uh, yeah, Barakallah Fika, Hanan, for your time, man. Uh, have you cut your fast yet? No, we still got an hour. Taib, so even, even more shukr on your, uh, for your time. And yeah, man. Uh, we keep in touch anyways, as every day, literally. <laughs> yes, I'm in trouble. Eyo, barakallah. Kusala, barakallah.